Thank you and good morning. Um, today I'm going to give a brief overview of how Novartis Institutes for Biomedical Research are using AWS and scalable infrastructure to accelerate scientific research. So NIBRI is the research division of Novartis Pharmaceuticals. We have seven campuses worldwide specializing in a number of disease areas, including oncology, ophthalmology, respiratory diseases, to name a few. Our purpose is to cure and care and provide medicines that treat and prevent diseases, ease suffering, and improve the quality of life. Each day we try, strive to create shorter development times, produce safer treatments, and actually lower costs. And this is the reason why. The average length of time to take a drug to market is approximately 10 years at a cost of $1 billion. And these are actually probably underestimates right now. My group's role within NIBA is to help the scientists reduce these numbers. Um, these are absolutely staggering numbers, and we have to start to reduce them quickly. Now, the way we're doing this is through the application of high-performance computing to a number of scientific disciplines, including next-generation sequencing, imaging, and a variety of modeling and simulation techniques, one of which, known as virtual screening, I'll briefly talk about now. So virtual screening is a computational technique used in drug discovery to search libraries of small molecules to see which have the ability or most likely are to bind to a target, typically a protein receptor or enzyme. So think of it as a lock and key model, where the protein is the lock and the small molecules are the compounds of the keys. And basically want to test tens of thousands of keys against the lock to see which may fit and which may have the ability to activate or deactivate the mechanism. So back in 2013, our colleagues in computational chemistry came to us with a request to dock 10 million compounds against the common target that had been identified in a number of cancer-related pathways. Now, this seems simple enough at first until we started to do the calculation, and we figured that in order to, to actually complete this work, we need sustained access to over 50,000 compute cores. Now, this was a bit of a problem, uh, as for one, we didn't have 50,000 compute cores internally, or the $40 million to build a cluster of this size. In addition to this, our internal HPC environment was 100% utilized, and our job pending times were already increasing exponentially. Um, we were absolutely dead in the water. We were stuck, and we didn't know what to do next. So what we did, we contacted our friends over at Cycle Computing, Molsoft, and AWS to see if they could help design a system that could handle such a load, uh, which also brought with it a whole bunch of other uh, requirements that I'll not go into now. But basically, we had to create a system that was fast, extremely secure, inexpensive, and easy to use. Quite a daunting task. Um, but the team rallied, and we're certainly up to it. And this is the architecture they came up with. So our data and application stack was encrypted and securely uploaded to S3. This data was then used to populate local EBS volumes of spot instances as they were built and deployed across four availability zones using the combination of Cycle Server and Chef. Now, given the embarrassingly parallel nature of our workflow, we were able to use Condor Job Scheduler and Cycle Server to actually split and distribute the job across thousands of different instances, while at the same time retaining the ability to monitor the job progress and, more importantly, cost. It really was quite an elegant solution. So we spun up 10,600 spot instances across four availability zones, which equates to about 87,000 compute cores. And we did this in the course of two hours, actually under two hours. We then proceeded to dock 10 million compounds in nine hours. So basically, we'd, ca we'd completed 39 years, or the equivalent of 39 years of computational chemistry in just under nine hours for a total cost of around $4,200. It really was amazing. And most importantly, we'd actually identified three promising compounds out of that simulation. So the, result were, the results certainly went through the organization pretty quickly. So as you can imagine, demand for services in this space has been going through, going through the roof. So in the last few months, we've been reworking our financial and operational models to be able to cope with these next generation workflows, especially in the space of imaging, genomic sequencing, and large scale analytics, all of which come with their own unique properties, problems, and challenges, especially when you ask the scientists to think big and what would you do with unlimited resources. Now what we're dealing with is the, the millions of molecules or millions of compounds are now becoming billions of compounds. We're actually gonna need a supercomputer to analyze the results when we start running this. Next generation sequencing is producing data faster, cheaper, and at a scale of 
an order of magnitude greater than the year before. We're now moving from tens of terabytes a year to hundreds of terabytes a year. And possibly one of the scariest and most disruptive technologies we've seen in almost a decade, known as live cell imaging, has the potential to produce 10 times the amount of data of next generation sequencing data. So we're actually looking at petabytes a year of this data. As you can tell, this is quite a challenge and it's quite a problem. The science is real and it's happening right now. So with that in mind, we've actually been reaching out and collaborating with AWS to see if we can actually retool, rebuild, and actually completely rethink the way our high-performance computing environment is set out globally. Because we really need to build a research computing platform that's able to cope with these new emerging technologies as they come through, the, as, as they come through in the science. Um, and on that note, I'd like to say thank you for listening. And hopefully, what I'm really hoping for is that by Amazon reInvent, we may be able to actually show some of these, these use cases that we're talking about right in terms of imaging and sequencing. So on that note, I'd like to say thank you uh, for your attention, and thank you for AWS for having me here today. Thank you.